Hey everyone, John here from the Deers Embroidery Legacy and in today's video we're going to show you how to use the branching tool within the Design Doodler. It works with the satin and the running stitch and it makes doodling so much easier and so much more fun. Now if you enjoy these videos make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell so that you're notified every time we release a new video. Now using the brush tool within the Design Doodler is super easy. I have my widget which has all of my brushes or my tools and the first two I have showing are my running stitch as well as my steel which is a satin stitch. If I choose the steel, I can choose the type of shape and I'm just gonna use a freehand shape which is automatically defaulted. I'm gonna leave the density standard and I'm going to choose a stitch width which three millimeters is just fine. Now I'm just gonna randomly create some lines and if I create a line right here and just create the shape, it turns it into stitches. Now generally when the join to anchor is posted, I can go to my next point right here, continue up and continue on, and my stitches will just continue to flow. But that does require a little bit of mapping, meaning that you always have to remember to start up where you left off, and then it will continue to embroider the design and not give you unnecessary jumps or trims. But a lot of times a new embroiderer will do an object, and if I turn off the 3D, and you can see my commands, tie in, tie out, and there is a jump stitch from the center of the design moving out. But if I want to start branching other pieces off of this, I can do as many little branches as I want, and I can continue to join other pieces off of that main piece that I actually doodled, and I can create something that just kind of looks like this. Now the issue is, if I were to run this on a machine right now, it would not run really in a production friendly way. I, if I look at the slow redraw and I see how this design is going to actually embroider, I can hit that start button and you're going to see that it's going to start to sew and it's doing all of the stitches and as it continues it'll do that first line all the way from the beginning to end because I joined at the anchor but then it's going to start jumping and trimming all over the place and that's what you don't want to see as an embroiderer is a bunch of unnecessary jumps and trims within your design so what we can do to, to fix that or to remedy that is we can select the entire object so right down at the bottom toolbar I have a select all when I select the entire object I can see it now has that turquoise wireframe all the way around it and when it is selected now my uh, branching tool is active and when I just click it now you're going to see that all of those jump stitches disappeared it has reorganized all of the pieces of that design so that they are all one now to give you an idea and I'll just undo that so we'll back to the original and when I select that object again I can see within my sequence view I have a little plus that goes to the minus which shows me all of my pieces and I can see that there is a whole bunch of individual little objects that are making up that one object and when I do select that and again I branch it you're gonna see that everything now is all branched as one piece now just because it's branched you still have your property control so if I select this and I want to go in and change some of the you know things within this if I want to make it a little wider or I want to make it a little bit thinner I can still do all of the density controls the angle I'm not limited to anything like that inset values and I can also go in and I can adjust and change the underlay so if I do want to have a parallel underlay on that completely branched object or contour so that I get more stability for my fabric everything will still work as planned before so it is a great easy tool that makes doodling even easier and you don't have to have a ton of theory to understand the process you just have to know that as long as the objects connect as long as they touch each other they will branch together now with the running stitch it's the exact same thing you want to make sure that you use the running stitch you can draw lines as randomly as you want so I can have all of my pieces as long as I know that they are going to connect in some way I will be okay and when I go and branch it 
they'll all branch together properly. If I am off a tiny little bit, so I can see that there's really not a connection right there between the two, usually the software is pretty forgiving and it will still give me the connection point, but if you are way out in the middle of nowhere and the space is too far between them, when I select everything and I go to branch, you'll see that it did actually branch this piece right here. This piece is branched, but this one was too far away and it actually left that all by itself. So it will branch any objects that are connecting, but if it's not close enough, then it will actually isolate it as its own object as well. Now one thing I do need to point out is that the branching tool works within the same stitch types and the same properties. So you can't branch together a running stitch with a steel or a satin stitch. And if you are embroidering a steel at a certain width, it all has to be the same width. If I do try to create a steel with some thinner stitches, it will allow me to go in and create all of these objects here and I can do my branching. And then I can say to myself, well, I want all that done, but I want to have a thicker piece down the center. What's going to happen when I select and branch that is it is automatically going to revert it to the first property that you chose. So it's important that you realize that when you're creating a design. Now, given all that, if you do want to do a tree which has some smaller branches and longer branches, you still can use the branching uh, tool but within smaller sections which kind of makes sense because you want the smaller sections to join on to the larger branch so you just have to think a little bit uh, as far as mapping is concerned and what I could do is keep that piece there if that is all my smaller branches and then actually well let's let's get rid of that altogether and I'm going to do the same thing but this time I'm going to do some smaller branches so let's put a small branch there and I'll do a small branch over here and I'll do one more over here, another one over here, and one more over here. And then I'm going to take that object, I'm going to branch it together so that this is branched. And then what I'm going to do, because I can see that is where my end point is, is I'm going to join that to a larger branch. And if I were doing this, I would continue on. And now my design is going to flow properly uh, between the objects. All I have to remember to do is to grab this object here because I can see how it's joining that line together. Go to my reshape and let's drag this one right over here closest point so that it got rid of the traveling stitch. So there is, uh, I guess, uh, all types of control where you can accomplish whatever you want but you do have some limitations with your branching with regards to the consistency of size of these stitches or even with a running stitch if you want to branch a running stitch that is a very short stitch length and then do one that's a longer stitch length because with let's say fur on dogs the fur on the jowl of the dog is shorter hair and as it goes down the body it might get longer I do need to make sure that I logically separate my stitch lengths based on the actual you know, reality of the object that I'm digitizing. And in that case, I want to make sure that I do my branching in sections based on getting the visual results that I really want. But it's a really cool tool. It'll make your doodling easier. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to sew this little sample out so you can see how everything actually flows together nicely. There's no jumps and trims. And that's the goal for any design that you create for machine embroidery. You want it to sew out efficiently and you want the design to look good. So let's sew this out and we'll see the results because the proof is always in the stitching. Now I made sure I sewed one out with no auto branching feature included and then I did the one that we just did on screen and you can see that there is a drastic difference between the two. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you next time.